healthy weight first. So I'm 5'2". Uh-huh. How much should I weigh? So one of the major ways that physicians tend to look at a healthy weight is to really look at the body mass index because there's been a lot of studies that look at what various body mass index ranges okay. will end up correlating with as well as as far as diseases are concerned, overall longevity, etc. Okay. So the way to calculate body mass index is to actually take your weight in pounds okay. and divide it by your height in inches squared and then you multiply that by a conversion factor of 703. So we're clearly not going to be doing that right now. But so if I'm five two but, I don't even know what I weigh. Like yeah, 25. but the thing is that when, when you go home and you calculate that, the way that you're going to look at it is, is that if your body mass index comes out to be somewhere between 18.5 to about 24.9, that's a normal weight range. Okay. Anything under 18.5 is considered underweight. Okay. Anywhere between 24.9 to um, about 29, uh, 29.9 is yeah. considered overweight. And then anything from 29.9 onwards is obesity. Okay, but what if you're just muscular, right? Like, I'm pretty muscular, yes. right? I've never been skinny. Uh -huh. I think I've been skinny since, like, the fifth grade. So what if you've got more muscle mass and you just weigh a little bit more? See, that's interesting because of the fact that there is that concern when we physicians start to look at body mass index yes. to say, well, your body build is a little different. However, having said that, when they did those studies on the body mass index, they didn't take into consideration of that, they just looked at the number. And okay. so in and of itself, of that number, there is an indication of how your risk for chronic diseases are going to be regardless of the body mass. So when, I, when patients come in and we talk about the variations of what their body mass index should be like yeah. and their body shape and size, we talk about the leniency, almost like a two standard deviation of what's okay. Oh. but. To keep in mind that body mass index itself does have indications, whatever your number is within those different ranges of normal, overweight, obesity, they do in and of itself carry its own risk association yeah. to what potential uh, health concerns we might have in the long term. I mean, what if your body fat, what if you're a gymnast, right? And we know right. gymnasts are pretty built, right? Yes. They're like little muscle machines. Right. So what if you're, you're a gymnast and your body fat is like, you know, 16%, like something ridiculously yes. great, by the way. Yeah. Um, then, I mean, is that a good thing? It is. And so for, for me, again, it's taking that, in medicine, it's really looking at guidelines. Okay. And seeing, taking those guidelines and extrapolating them to the actual clinical person. Okay. So when patients come in and they're clearly low body fat size, their waist circumference is low, um, you know, they eat healthy, they live healthy, they exercise. You know, if your your body mass index is, you know, right bordering between normal and overweight, yeah. I think we're okay. okay. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's really about taking, there's no cookie cutter medicine when it comes to really looking at someone's wellness and health. You really have to take that specific person standing in front of you yeah. and then extrapolating that to, do I think in this clinical case the person's healthy or not? Clearly they're fine if okay. those other factors are perfect for where the person should be in their age and their body size and shape and shape um, and their activity level and their what they're eating. So then, and as far as eating is concerned then, how many times a day should we be eating? I hear so many things about you should eat such many, you know, so many times. Over here you should only do da 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 da. How yeah. many times? So I don't have a straight answer for that. The reason is because I usually, everyone has a little bit of a different um, lifestyle and a different pattern that they're used to eating. Okay. Um, but you should, whatever pattern that you're eating, it should be a pattern. Don't do one day where you're eating nothing until dinner and then the next day you're eating a big breakfast and then nothing for the rest of the day. Consistent. Yes. Yeah. And what we're really looking for is I usually will recommend either three major meals okay. um, with very small caloric intake snacks in between, maybe you know between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner, or five small meals a day. Those are the main variations um, that I go with. But you, but if you're someone with, that's a grazer where you're eating small meals throughout the day, just make sure that your total caloric intake though isn't far and above beyond what you need because okay. sometimes the pickers tend to overeat because they're not watching per small meal. It should be a small meal, not ah. like five major meals throughout the day. Yeah. Great, okay. Look, there's more information on our website with um, all of Dr. Julie's expertise. You can also email her that way. And we thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was you're fun. welcome. It was so much Good fun. to see you, as always. Hey, great to see you. Yeah. And we'll be right back.